Uh, welcome everybody. I think it's uh, 615. So I'm just going to get rolling. So uh, this is, uh, well, so we started this, you know, we are chatting in Hackerspace, some of us, uh, and then we thought maybe we should have uh, this meetup called Cool Geeks Meetup because every now and then you have uh, people, you know, hack hackers like Shingo coming from overseas and dropping by the Singapore Hackerspace. And we had this, and he actually came before. And this, and he didn't, I don't think he presented anything. And this time, I'm not going to let him go unless he share about the stuff he does. Okay, so Shingo is actually from Japan. And uh, it's, uh, he, besides this uh, Ninja PCR uh, that he's going to talk about, he has a lot of very, very cool projects. I think it's uh, being showcased right at the table over there. All right. And after after Shingo finishes, we have uh, another one of our Hackerspace members, Bob, who just finished his uh, Delta 3D printer. Not finished, but... Okay, yeah, yeah, almost finished. <laughs> and uh, it's completely DIY. Um, and he it, called it the Delta Bob. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, it, it was just completed like on a, one of the evenings like two nights ago. He was like working throughout the night, literally. Okay, so without further ado, I will just hand over the, uh, to uh, Shingo to start uh -huh. off everything. Okay. Ah, nice to see you guys. <laughs> it's my second visit to Singapore. Uh, I had a booth at the Shenzhen until last two, few days ago because there was a so-called Shenzhen Maker Week, a so big event including Maker Fair Shenzhen. My booth was uh, a bit separated to the uh, Civic Center, but I really enjoyed it. So after that, it's not easy, interesting, to I just came back to Tokyo, so that's the reason why I'm here. Okay, let's start my introduction, and uh, let me allow to use the slides when I use the Chen Chen too. Yeah, uh, actually. So I'm a maker, private maker. I'm not a member of a big company, nor a big group like a Hackerspace. I'm just a single maker. But something I made is uh, <laughs> cannot be believed as a private maker's product. For example, this is a mumpled aircraft when I was made in university, Tokyo University. It's totally mumpled. You can see the pilot is moving his legs so fast, yes. I flew about uh, 1.3 km when I was in university. And uh, I'm basically a software engineer. So I made a so-called augmented reality application <coughs> showing such kind of a yellow line over the sky. So use like this. I, this line shows when you can see the space station. Yes, it's brighter than any star and uh, we can calculate on the cloud server. And my wife's application showing this uh, oh, bunch of yellow lines. It became a first official application of the humanoid robot launched to the space station. And right now, making a so-called DNA amplifier, I'll take detail about later, for more than 1 billion patients over the world. But as I said, I made almost all, except, except the aircraft, <laughs> space station application and DNA amplifier, only with my wife. Yes, I have a company, but only with my wife, and not funded, so self-funding. Uh, actually, I have no background about biology, no hardware, no software, actually. I majored in physics, and hers is architecture. I made aircraft, that's all my background. We are both bachelor, not a master degree. Uh, but I learned everything about software from open source software, like as a programmers. I'm also a server engineer. And thanks to the maker movement, I learned a lot of things, almost everything about hardware from open hardware and maker movement. And uh, we extended our st skills by self-training and uh, doing a lot of things. So in this slide, <coughs> I'd like to express how I learned everything, simply. Okay, then step one, I just enjoyed making something. Uh, actually, may I made a DIY, especially aircraft. But aircraft, I'm not sure. That's a bicycle, just a bicycle. <laughs> Adding some wings more than 30 meters, keeping weight less than 30 kilograms. It may fly. <laughs> Maybe called as an aircraft. <laughs> Good luck. It's really easy because the black one is a carbon pipe, works as a bone, and the propeller I made using the ski pole covered up with a balsa. So it's like a craft working. This is a close up photo of the wing, but almost nothing, except the blue one. Yeah, blue one is a heat insulator, often used uh, behind the walls to heat insulate. So it's really cheap. Actually, I have here. Yeah, so 
and the drum, how it light. It's a main material I use to make shape wing. So easy to operate. So carbon pipe, heat insulator, wrap up with a styrene board, front edges, and wrap everything with a microfilm, which shrinks a little when you add heat. So actually 30 meter wings can be split into seven pieces so not a big space is required just um here is enough i guess <laughs> you so it's not impossible to fly you have to need to fly it's just to find friends like here uh, i recommend the five plus <laughs> and uh, a little aerodynamics knowledge is not that professor is required just a student or someone should be involved and it costs about 10,000 US dollars. You may feel it's too expensive, but if you can find such kind of 20 people, it's not so as much, I guess. But you have to stand out. First, fast, total five or six fail. <laughs> breaking, breaking, breaking. That's required to make uh, knowledge is how to fly. So it's sometimes very dangerous. So safety first and team play is a very important things I learned from these activities. After graduate, I'm a, become a software engineer and it's made a so a lot of sheet I call small outputs. So like a hacking, yes, in this hacker space there are so many programmers. So I do not care about the, the say detail, but. The, <laughs> When I get surprised something, when I think, oh, Kinect is so cool, then I write it. <laughs> if I get impressed with something, I often mix anything in, uh, my, this is actually my wife told it, in three days. But in three days, but this is really impressive. Hmm, nice so output, I guess so. So I already made almost a thousand of such kind of small programs. Small program is really enough to as a expression or something. Then, so I have a program, small program of uh, augmented reality with, and uh, I'm uh, made an aircraft, so I'm really interested in aerospace actually. So I connected both seats. That's the reason why I made uh, this augmented reality software. And uh, by making this, I was invited by NASA to Florida to the launch part of space shuttle to sh see the space shuttle launch because uh, I made this application not only uh, it's paid up and uh, used all over the world more than 30,000 people but uh, not for money but for a family the left girl lady is a Japanese astronaut and uh, I made this application for his husband and uh, daughter uh, yeah, who remained on the earth and uh, I made these applications to find her mother easily. Then I met uh, at, at this, uh, in Florida, I met a uh, Japanese science educator, but I will introduce later. Then after that, make a movement camp. Of course, I'm really interested in and connect it again. For example, this is my first touch to the 3D cat. I have no teacher, <coughs> but trained by myself. It's really easy to make such kind of things. And in these days, if you use a laser cutter, such kind of robot is really easy to make. I added the Arduino based, Bluetooth based Arduino, and it's my first time to use a sub motors so that the water pipe can point out anywhere in the sky. In this water pipe, there's a laser beam modules is placed so that point now where the space station is using laser beam. So romantic. About uh, more than half million people saw this movie I made and uploaded to the YouTube. So. <coughs> then, of course, it's interesting to use audio, you know, but uh, if you are just satisfied with it, I strongly recommend to make your own circuit. S begin to start. How to start? It's really simple. Just pull out the IC from the Arduino. It works, yes, it's now blinking here. I just pull out from the Arduino itself. It works, yes. Arduino is enough, even if you, uh, if you connect the IC and oscillator, then it's still Arduino. Then you can add anything on the breadboard. 
And I also recommend to use a PCB CAD if you never use it. This is very simple, anyone can use it. And nice another feature of such kind of PCB CAD is you can design your own PCB easily even without using knowledge about the electric circuit or something. In case of Eagle software, PCB CAD, there's an old root button face. So just click it and I got this PCB data and sent it to Bulgaria. In, in these days, you should, I recommend to send the Shenzhen, of course. Then this is my first PCB I designed. This is just a kitchen timer, a countdown every minute. And the output is uh, just a wooden measure, often used uh, to measure the soy sauce in Japan. I'm found at the flare market. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anything, anything is okay. Maybe you're interested in different things and uh, sometimes uh, your PCB will solve your problem. Then I recommend to make your own PCB. Then after that, only half year later, I could make so complex electric circuit by hand without auto routing. Well, in these days, you can buy parts online from even one piece at a cheap price. And uh, in Japan, we often use uh, such kind of paper, waterproof paper, and cut exactly the silver, we call it pad, to solder. I will detail if you have any questions later. And <coughs> place the PCB like this and cover with a paper. And the left one is a so-called solder paste. It's a solder, but uh, like a toothpaste. And I use the right one, the skijis, to print solder paste just exactly over the pad. So I think you can see the silver one is covering only over the pad. Then place the parts by hand. And in Japan, it's a Japanese pizza cooker, so maybe it's really hard to find in Singapore. But any oven, which will become more than 200 degrees or something, is enough. In Japan, I can buy it as a tender US dollars, so I use it, but uh, I also have 200 US dollars defro oven, so called, on eBay, eBay, so I have one, such kind of a professional ones. Just to put inside the oven, and it reach a melting point for a few seconds, and cool it down. Then, soldering is finished, so I do not use a soldering rod. Luckily, in Fab Lab Tsukuba, north part of Japan, uh, Tokyo, there was a so-called pick and press machines. You can pick up the parts and place precisely over the PCB, so I can manufacture even by myself. That's how I made my first product. It's an Arduino compatible board, but it has also USB host IC, so you can connect the Android devices for Android programmer like me. It's really nice because uh, under many, so many programmers start hardware hacking using my PCB. That's really helpful. Then, after that, I expand, advanced my skills by doing some hardware jobs. For example, this is a commercial movie for, of coffee, often sold at the convenience stores. I added uh, some more small but smart Bluetooth modules, actuation sensors, vibrators, and fan to the mustache because the symbol of this coffee is mustache. <laughs> For example, I can check the position of the, his box, is straight or not, using the actuation sensor, and tell that to the vibrators. And of course, this is a coffee commercial message, so it's a smell is very important. So if you tap the applications, the fan rotates right here. <laughs> Actually, we use too much wax to shape it, so it smells so bad. <laughs> uh, sorry, I've carried a uh, durian here, and, and uh, I'll never do that again, sorry. <laughs> then, if you get a like on Facebook or get a phone call, the mustache will tell you by shaking, and even you can talk with it, because there's a wireless phone behind. And uh, I also hacked his heart too, so that when I get o'clock, pigeon appears. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the usual product of a pigeon clock and uh, analyzed the inside. And oh, it works. Then I added the <coughs> wireless device modules. 
Okay, then I advanced my skills, but the whole story from he, until here is about my history. So I am, I'm interested in a circuit, I'm interested in aerodynamics, and researching all my, my story. But today, I'm really respecting, I'm really love to visit the hacker space because all the hackers have such kind of backgrounds and have their own lives. So I really respecting your own sheets, what you interested in, what you surprised, and what are you making? So I met, I, I said that I met a um, science educator in Florida. He knows nothing about software nor hardware, but trying his best to spread this wooden box, the right guy is carrying, to all <coughs> Japanese school. These two guys, uh, what these two guys are trying to spread is a so-called DNA amplifier. DNA amplifier, let me explain. DNA is very small, so maybe no one can see it. <laughs> if you can see it, it's very useful, interesting, but unfortunately not. So this machine is a copier, copy. For example, put your food inside here, then one DNA maybe inside. Then it becomes inside this machine from one to two to four to double, double. More than 10,000. So that you can see as a such kind of line. In this single line, there's so bunch of copied DNA parts of something. In case of a human, you are easily get drunk or you are very strong to the beer or something. You easily find. So it's necessary to, for every DNA experiment, if you like to learn something about DNA, this machine is really, really necessary. But typical one costs about 4,000, 10,000 users and too many buttons. I cannot still operate like that. So it's too expensive for Japanese science school, school or something. And almost that's the reason, only reason why we have no literacy about DNA. So, so that's really important problem for science educator. So they are one day they ask me, um, can you make it? But uh, I, let me explain a little detail. So the uh, right guy, United States, made first open source DNA amplifier named OpenPCR five years ago. It's a really nice project. And the left guy, Japanese science educator, tried to spread to the schools. But the Japanese schools are mainly so close-minded. Oh, I cannot get support in Japan or something? Then I don't know about it. So, but it's open source hardware. So the right Japanese guy asked me, can you make it? It's open source DNA hardware. Yeah, that's a nice challenge. That's the reason why I made my own DNA amplifier <coughs> named Ninja PCR because I think it's really easy to remember <laughs> two years ago. Its parts price is right now 200 US dollars and uh, I'm carrying here right now. So please touch it later. <laughs> Academic purpose, good story. Then it ends. Nice, nice. I made a small bunch of it and uh, my partner, science educator, distributed it even individuals. But uh, I found more and more people need this device, DNA amplifier, because it combines it with such kind of rapid test. In case of this, it works like a pregnancy check sheet. If you drop amplified DNA on the one side here and wait five minutes, some lines will appear. In case of this, if you can see the line, pink lines here, it's the peanuts was inside the food you placed inside. It's very important information if you have a full IG. Full IG is especially a children diseases. So in the United States, two children in every class need this device but they do not have 
because it's too expensive. It's not so common. It's hard to use. It's dangerous sometimes to use because some parts behind here reaches more than 100 degrees Celsius. So if children without knowledge use it, maybe he will get burned easily. That's the reason why I'm making this latest DNA amplifier almost the end of last year named Sakura PCR. The parts price is now 100 US dollars and uh, change, another change point, different point, is that uh, it can be operated for my applications because I have a background about software and hardware engineer so it's really easy to communicate via Bluetooth and uh, some parts are covered, some, uh, yeah, as I said, some hot parts are totally covered and uh, move like a CD tray, like this. So even children can test their food safely and easily by themselves. So who need this device? Food IG patients, more than 500 million. And if you place your blood inside here, malaria DNA can be amplified, made copied. So I mean, it can be used to detect you are infected by malaria or some other infection diseases. Especially malaria, there's more than 500 million patients every year. So, not only for academic purposes, this device is really, really required by so many people. After this, I'm planning to make upgrade, so-called real-time PCR I'm planning to make. It can be used to detect the HIV and Ebola, even. And uh, my company is very small, so I think I can do some business, even, <coughs> leaving it as open hardware. I mean, please copy my hardware and please install my application here. I sell such kind of rapid tests or some expendables, so buy it. And I'll provide the best service through the app. Maybe that will be enough to my such kind of small company like me. In these days, there are so many tools to prototype. For example, I'm using Autodesk 3D CAD, Eagle is a PCB CAD, and I have a CNC and 3D printer in my home, so I use to prototype such kind of things. And uh, there are so many smart and fast chip you can easily use uh, available in these days. And a few Shenzhen or somewhere can make a P your own PCB at cheap price and some 3D printing service like Shapeways and the Perth Electric Perth can be bought or even anytime you can buy it. And not only such kind of web services or hardware, human relation is really, really important, especially like this hacker space is one of my favorite places. But also, I'm one of the first 10 maker who was supported by Japanese Ministry of Economy this year. And uh, I, by supporting, su by support of them, I visited the Manila and Shenzhen and Taipei to get connected more professional skill persons. So this was the conclusion of my maker fair Shenzhen. So I was really, really respecting other background and it, I think it's really important to collaborate with other people and make something open so that anyone can join your product. But yeah, this is a hacker space after this, after Shenzhen. So I added some more things. So let, uh, let me share the current problem I'm still wondering. So I see, as you see, I made some more complex DNA amplifier. And I think it's not only the case of DNA amplifier. Many open hardware will be manufactured to solve problems of people. Not only for geeks. Geeks can fix it or manufacture it by themselves, but uh, such kind of a hood IG or malaria patients are not usually geeks. But it's really, I think you also agree that uh, not so easy to make, even to manufacture for more than one billion people, then if only I can make it, is it really open source? That's what I'm wondering.
Oh, make a movement so sad everything. I think it's not so simple, please. <laughs> For example, I, yes, I said I have a CNC, but it, such kind of a small purse. How many hours do you think to make? I cut one side for one or two hours and pour the plaster have to wait six an hour and upside down and, and pay another one hour <laughs> to cut another thing so it takes too long time nice for prototyping but worse for manufacturing how about the 3D printing? yes that's nice <laughs> I put start printing and sleep and waking up <laughs> this part dropped on the floor <laughs> totally failed it's also important but uh, important too i think but it's not for manufacturing i learned today that the uh, ministry of your country said like that make a movement is not the panacea I, it's the first time i learned this word <laughs> solution to all problem yes i totally agree with him then in that in such kind of cases, shall I order injection mode? In Taiwan, manufacturer consultant said, oh, it costs about 30,000 US dollars to manufacture the plastic parts. Do you pay it? I need PCBs to be manufactured too. You have to order to Chen Chen, right? Then get crowdfunding or investment to pay such monies. Maybe they will not allow you to make such a kind of virtual booth. <laughs> Crowdfunding is also a nice idea, but we cannot estimate how much I get older. Or if you fail, you give up. I think that's not the solution of problem, I'm wondering. <coughs> uh, he also said that uh, mass production no longer ages. But the age of mass making, great things. I almost thinking similar things in Shen Chen. So my plan is not only sharing the hardware itself, 3D data of outfits and PCB. Of course I share, but planning to share, for example, such kinds of uh, how to say, mold data too. If you have <coughs> only CNC, CNC is enough. If you have CNC, cut wood for silicone to make a silicone mold and pour resin to make the parts. Maybe I have to, uh, I still have a lot of things I have to test when I come back to Japan tomorrow. But I think it's really important to make enough volume for all people. And not only the outfits. We need to manufacture the PCB itself. To manufacture PCB, such kind of a stencil is required. If you use a small part, such kind of a paper is not enough. So I also planning to share the stencil G code. G code is so called CNC programming language data. So if you <laughs> upload it into the CNC, anyone can make the stencil and my new hack shoes, a PCB even. So I suggest, I'm wondering, still wondering, but open manufacturing is really important things I'm now feeling much. In these days, such kinds of mass production knowledge is close to a small company, a big company, like Sony or some big company in Shenzhen or somewhere. But I think such kinds of open hardware should be manufactured where, exactly where they need. For example, I heard the malaria is very severe problem in that, uh, Indonesia, Jogjakarta. So, in that cases, I think, I don't, uh, such kind of the PCL should be manufactured in this place. How about, I'll show share the mode CNC data so you can make manufacture and send it feedback that will be easiest way if I manufacture everything in Tokyo and send it to all over the world uh, that would be nice as a business but uh, maybe I cannot support enough well 
and that's not a good idea, I think. Each city, for example, I have a pick and press machine in my home, so leave it everything to uh, about the PCB to me. But I have no knowledge about biology, so please buy police or some place in the US, in Singapore, please help me. And uh, there are some places, places, malaria, some developing countries, malaria is very severe, but not in developed country. But instead of that, in developed country, uh, countries, uh, the food allergy is a very severe problem. I met a fab lab guy from Argentina in Shenzhen. He is a professional about mold design. So after coming back to Tokyo, I promised with him to design mold data with him or worldwide. Such kind of a collaboration is already started. In Shenzhen, as I said, I had a booth. My next booth was Tito. He is a member, founder of BioCurious in San Francisco, exactly who made OpenPCR. It's my first time to meet him, but I know what he think, how he called. <laughs> so, we have never talked, even with a Facebook message or something. It's my first time to talk with him, but we could become a mutual friend in one day. And the right guy, Lucas, is a member of World Society located in Amsterdam. He also making so many biotechnology devices open source, in uh, influenced by the open PCR activity, West Coast. So I think such kind of activity is not impossible, but already started. For my first target, for example, I had this uh, event named Transform Making at uh, Georgia Carter from August to September. So when I come back to Japan, I have to <laughs> concentrate on, on making such kind of project to let them make my own PCR in Georgia Carter, August. Thank you. That's my end of the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions, I hope I can answer. <laughs> so you will be in Jokokata uh, for the whole period? Uh, I would like to join, but uh, I, I think it's a little too far. <laughs> so you're not going for that? No, I think mm, I'm, I'm not so rich person. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it's held in this month, and, and the makeup fair is held in this month. So I definitely want to join, but <laughs> Singapore is a little bit far from Tokyo. Sorry. Yeah. So your Ninja PCR, I think the, the price was two hundred, and then yes. uh, Sakura was one hundred. Yes. So may I know what's the? Uh, I mean, what was the? What was actually the optimization that you have to? enable you to actually half the price. Great. Yes, I changed uh, something, but uh, especially I do not use uh, uh, Arduino anymore, so I do not need to pay to $27 or something. And uh, I use a laser cutter at that time. Laser cutter is really also easy, good way for prototyping, but uh, it takes about 30 minutes to cut all parts using laser cutter. So someone has to stand next to the laser cutter and it takes a too long time. That's the reason why it's uh, so expensive. And uh, I, in case of this, I use a injection. I estimate the price by uh, under the <coughs> assumption that I will use uh, injection plastic, so it can greatly reduce the price itself. But what's the one most important piece? What is the one most most expensive piece of the open PCR? Is it the machine aluminium block? Great question, yes. Such kind of DNA amplifier is very cheap because most of the parts, uh, parts are not very common ones for heat sinks and the Peltier to control the temperature are well commonly used for PCs. But the most expensive one is this. The aluminum Aluminum block CNC. Only can be made CNC or some casting or something. All right. So how do you do it at the moment? Is it machine with CNC or custom? Right now I have to order CNC and especially I have to use a specially well heat conductive aluminium. Yeah. 
So the material itself is also expensive. So it defines most of the prices itself. The machine aluminum block. Okay. Yes. And the AC adapter is also. AC adapter. <laughs> I use AC adapter and it costs thirty-five dollars right now. So the one third of that price is just a power supply. So <coughs> I'm still wondering how to make it cheaper, but uh, if I want to sell in Japan, we have to get a certification about the electric power or something. Mm -hmm. So I have to pay a lot, an extra price for that. <laughs> there are any other questions? Your original Ninja PCR, is there a reason why you, just uh, we know there are a lot of like Chinese, Chinese clones of the other is there a reason why you use the original Arduino? Oh, I see, I see. The Ninja PCR. Yeah, actually, if I use such kind of a cheap uh, Arduino, it can reduce <coughs> the price directly. But it's just um, for cutting purposes for two years ago. In that age, it's, there's not so many reliable Arduino exists in the market. But in these days, I, we should use it instead of that. So your um, device is being sold uh, locally, as in the orders that you've got so far are in Japan? or uh, In this case? Uh, yes, I mostly sold to the Japanese local people or local schools, but the uh, first, first batch of this was sold to the National Science Center in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So that was my first visit here, just after that, in <laughs> the next country. <laughs> So they're using it for, for display or for they're using, they're using the machines? Uh, the science Center? Yeah, I heard that they are trying to spread, uh, use as a science class, but uh, I'm not sure it's going well or not in their country because I haven't heard about the after story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in your experience, you know, when you like uh, do sales pitches and all that, what uh, sorry? is the when you try and support, uh, advertise and market your this uh, Sakura PC and Ninja PCR to like you know institutions, what is the uh, I mean, uh, what is the uh, support? Uh, is there, are there any challenges that you know or reasons that they give you? Let's say they are not when they are not very keen to actually adopt because it seems that the I mean it's very cheap compared to your normal uh, conventional uh, PCR machines. Yeah. Are there any like uh, stories you can share with us? Uh. So you mean that there, is there any plans to sell the schools? No, I, I mean, you know, when let's say for example, maybe you may talk to people, uh, maybe let's say from a research institution, mm -hmm. and then you try and sell to them, and then maybe they say they they will they are not interested to buy, and then maybe they give you some reasons, mm -hmm. and I mean, I was, I'm just curious, you know, what kind of reasons will be uh, stopping people from actually um, adopting like your uh, open PCR machines like yours? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry if I mistook the point, but uh, to the schools, I, I think, right? I think I can help you answer that. So yeah. I think one of it is like, like warranty, right? So if you buy from a company, they might guarantee that if there's any problems, you can call the nation to fix it. Then the other thing also is that the because the block will affect the heating, like how long it takes to ramp up the temperature. So like the really expensive PCR machines have really good uh, like insulation from the top and then also from and they use a different kind of block I think so the, yes, the, yes. the ramp up time is much faster the rest, so, so that means a PCR reaction that will take two hours on this might take an hour on, on the related so maybe it, there might be those conditions but yeah thanks <laughs> What about the AC adapter? You said the AC adapter is very expensive. Yeah, because uh, Peltier is uh, using so much electric power. It at least it, will, it requires 135 wattages. Wow. Okay. But uh, maybe the more than 80 percent is for Peltier. Right. But um, you mentioned certifications. You can't sell it without. Yeah, I forgot the name of it, but uh, how to say? PSC. PSC. Have you ever heard it? It's required if you want to sell something, it's just directly connected to the concept. Okay. Of course, it takes uh, so much money, so I have to buy it from the AC adapter maker factories. Right. So that's the reason why it's expensive. Isn't it possible to use something, um, <coughs> something that's already available and so as part of maybe like a, a laptop charger? 
Yeah, usually laptop finds a nice idea and uh, some Dell computer or something I already asked, but uh, maybe currently the uh, thirty dollar is a minimum right now. Even though I'm ordering one thousand pieces. So in case of the open PCL, they use the usual ATX power supply, often used on the desktop PC computer. So that's the reason why it's a big, <coughs> big one. Right. That's another idea, but it uh, doesn't so cheap compared to the scale of the merits. But it will solve the problem of having to get certifications, right? Because <coughs> it's already part of something else. And you can sell the PCR separately uh, and they can order the part from all the supplies. Yeah, I guess so. If I I'm sure that it can be sold to one of it, uh, for example, 10,000 pieces. I can get the certification by myself. Okay. But uh, <coughs> it's also another risk. <laughs> so I'm still wondering to this. Okay. So is it okay? Any, any other questions for Shingo? I'm still here. If for a while, so anytime you can ask me, and uh, please touch me, <laughs> touch my products, touch my products. <laughs> also, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>